Welcome again, guys, to the Film Photography Channel. Let's take a look at the Nikon F6. All right, so let's get the specs out of the way because this camera is full of specs. This is uh, Nikon's uh, most developed and, and actually their, the, their ultimate expression of the film SLR. Nikon went to great lengths to make this camera super durable um, and super reliable. And of course, they, they went as far as you know extreme temperatures, super cold, super hot temperatures. Um, they painstakingly chose or tried different types of lubricants to see which lubricant would serve uh, you know the lo the best uh, in in the longest. So again, they they went to great lengths to to make this a durable camera. This was the first camera that Nikon designed using 3D computer analysis, and the reason for that is they tried to figure out a way to make this camera not just quiet, but how to design it efficiently using the minimum amount of parts possible, which in theory should make this like a really, really uh, long-lasting uh, and durable camera. Um, they're 14 years old. You know, I don't know exactly when this one was released, but it, it feels and acts like a brand new camera. And that's not hyperbole. I mean, I, you know, I can go out, go to the store and buy a new Nikon and uh, it'll feel uh, and act just like this one does. Uh, this camera actually had, uh, although it didn't have the interchangeable prism, it had interchangeable focusing screens, and some were like specialized for for uh, macro photography. Others uh, were made uh, especially for like uh, high focal length uh, telephoto lenses. And the standard one that it comes with would serve most people. It's got the uh, the eleven autofocus points, nine cross type, um, and it's a nice clear screen. It's one of the first uh, film SLRs that had a clear screen. Because if, uh, you know, most manual focusing uh, film SLRs had, you know, they needed that, that, that matte finish on the screen, which made the screens a little duller than this one. This one's nice and bright. Uh, it's still suitable for manual focusing, but it, it really is optimized for uh, auto focusing. Okay, Nikon was, was well into the digital SLR market when they came out with the, uh, with the Nikon F6, so... It kind of makes you wonder who this camera was really designed for. It's a professional level film S uh, film SLR when digital was pretty much taking over. Nikon actually released this when they released the uh, D2H, I think it was. So, you know, it begs the question, why come out with a film SLR? Especially one that's so nicely appointed, so nicely optioned when, you know, they're... Uh, well into uh, into the digital market, but anyway, uh, back to the specs. Uh, everything you'd expect uh, if you think of a you know like a D810, D850, a, a D750, D500, you're going to see the same specs here. Uh, for example, um, well this this has um, a automatic film advance that's already built in, and there is an optional um, battery pack. This uh, battery pack attached will give you eight frames per second. The camera as it comes is five and a half frames per second, um, which is plenty fast, especially considering you've only going to have 36 uh, frames in a, in your in most of your film rolls. It's got um, several different expo exposure modes. Okay, here's your mode button right here. You've got programmed uh, exposure. You've got uh, aperture priority. You've got shutter priority. You've got full manual. Um, it's it can use just about any uh, Nikon lens. It is compatible with G lenses, a, your AFS lenses with the built-in autofocus motor, your AFD lenses that um, rely on the camera body uh, uh, for the focus motor. Uh, either one is fine, and of course your your manual focus lenses um, are are compatible as well. And you can actually uh, in the screen here you can set the uh, y your non AI lenses just like you can in a in a digital camera. The viewfinder is absolutely gorgeous. The the uh, frame coverage is right around a hundred percent. The way they put it in the manual, it's right around a hundred percent. The magnification is is 0.74 uh, times, and the um, 
the autofocus uses a TTL phase detection. And I'll, I'll just say this about the autofocus. It uses 11 points uh, in here, just like you would see in your, you know, your DSLR, but you know, those have 51 and later on 151. Uh, this one has 11, nine of which are, are uh, cross type. And I will tell you that uh, it does a great job in, in terms of focusing. It's very snappy. It, it gets, you know, whatever it is you're, you're pointing at, it gets it into focus right away. No muss, no fuss, no hunting. It's, um, it's really good in terms of focusing. It makes you wonder why they ever came out with, you know, those multiple focus points, uh, you know, 51 or 151 or 200 some odd, uh, focus points. Um, it, in, in terms of focusing, I'll just show you here on the back. It, it does have uh, different focus modes in, to include uh, focus tracking. Uh, it's got a mode here that'll that'll uh, uh, focus on the what's closest in the frame. It's got a single point, which is what a lot of us use, and it's, it actually has a, a version of group area autofocus. So it's it's kind of um, you know ahead of its time. I don't think Nikon uh, came came back with the group area until the D810, I think it was, when they started using the, the group area, the D4, I think had it as well. It's got a uh, AF-ON dedicated uh, focus button, back button focus, AF-ON. The, the metering is, is just near infallible. It's just really, really hard to fool uh, the metering on this camera. I mean, it, it generally is gonna get the, the best possible result, um, even if you were to pull out your your uh, your uh, spot meter and and figure out uh, you know what the what the average is this meter will just do it it considers color it considers light it doesn't you know it, it it's a the color matrix metering it's um, and it's not the first generation it's it's a pretty well thought out uh, um, well evolved color matrix metering system uh, that being said right up here you have a setting for uh, spot the color matrix is in the middle, and the uh, and center weighted. If you know, if you, uh, which is like kind of like the classic setting for for most uh, the of the previous uh, uh, Nikon uh, SLRs in the in the F range. At least going from the F3 on back, it's uh, center weighted was the way that uh, most of them went. So this camera has the uh, the auto bracketing feature, uh, where you can actually set it in in you know in the in the screen with the with the bracket button and the and the toggles and the uh, the, the dial here. Uh, you can set it set how many you know uh, or how what the difference is between the exposures one stop one third stop one half stop, uh, and you can set how many um, frames you want to bracket. When you pop some film in, into this camera, it's a it's a DX you know, read a capable, readable camera. So, you know, most films are uh, gonna, most film canisters are gonna have the barcode. So you pop the film in there and it figures out what your setting is or what your box speed is. If you wanna underexpose it, push it, you know, or pull it, you can always set the film speed manual. And uh, the film speed is incredible. It goes down to, I think, six up to uh, 6,400. So it's got a, super wide range. The shutter speeds on this camera uh, range from 30 seconds to 1 8,000th of a second, putting it well into the pro uh, range of, uh, you know, shutter speeds. <laughs> the, um, the meter is so good, going back to the meter again, that it can actually uh, meter out to like a 30 minute exposure, uh, not a th versus a 30 second exposure. So if you set if you set the camera to the extended metering range, it can actually do a 30 minute exposure, and this camera will know when when it's nailed the exposure. Even you know after eight, 10, 15, 20 minutes, it's going to say, "Oh, got it, nailed it. Uh, this is what I." So I've got here the the Nikon SB 600. This flash and the SB 800 are the most compatible with this particular camera. And by that, I mean that um, these two flashes allow this camera to uh, use its uh, high-speed sync mode, uh, which actually will let you 
take photos up to one eight thousandth of a second using the flash um, so that's that's pretty incredible I mean because uh, the flash sync speed on this camera is actually not bad it's one two hundred fiftieth of a second but if you enable in the camera enable the FP sync mode um, and attach the flash of course you're you're now ready to go up to one eight thousandth of a second um, with the with the flash attached all right and the flash behaves really well with the with the camera if there were a zoom lens on here the flash would zoom back and forth with the camera uh, when you shut the the camera off the flash goes to sleep or shuts off with it um, shut the camera back on flash wakes right up uh, it doesn't always show up on the video correctly sometimes it'll look like it's missing a shot but uh, trust me when I tell you I'm, I'm looking at it and it's uh, you know yeah it's it's keeping up okay so the, this uh, flash and this camera well capable of you know keeping up with each other um, in in that circumstance if you're I don't know a paparazzi or something you're trying to take you know 20 photos of somebody in, in four or five seconds as they're getting out of their limo and doing whatever uh, this cameras this is one of those cameras that can do that okay um, Okay, let's take a look at uh, some of the other features. It it has the the same ready light inside. When you take a flash photo, that'll let you know. Yeah, you nailed the the, the flash exposure is correct, or it's not. Uh, it's got the sync terminals here for studio setup. Um, this is the first Nikon instead of using the little screw on uh, screw on covers that can kind of uh, disappear and get lost. It uses these little caps that are tethered to the uh, to the camera itself so you know when you expose one of the, the the terminals here the cap for the terminal hasn't gone anywhere um, self timer mode that's a pretty basic feature it has the the same ready light inside when you take a flash photo that'll let you know yeah you know the, the, the flash exposure is correct or it's not uh, it's got the sync terminals here for studio setup. Um, this is the first Nikon instead of using the little screw on uh, screw on covers that can kind of uh, disappear and get lost. It uses these little caps that are tethered to the uh, to the camera itself. So you know when you expose one of the, the the terminals here, the cap for the terminal hasn't gone anywhere. The self timer mode is uh, just one of the the many modes you've got up here. You've got con uh, you've got single shot. You've got continuous uh, high, continuous low, and then you've got a quiet mode. Let's, let's just listen to these modes here. This is the single mode. Okay. This is the continuous low, and you've got uh, options of, of what you want low to be how many frames per second and then this is continuous high that's five and a half frames per second and this is the silent mode okay and uh, I don't know how much quieter that is and then you've got your your self timer mode and you see the little blinking light there you can set the self timer for anywhere from two seconds to 20 seconds and the two seconds is kind of useful if you got it on a tripod or something and you just you know hit the shutter and you want to let the tripod stop shaking because they all shake even just that much um, so you want you know that's useful for the two second mode the mirror up mode is the last mode here on the dial and what that does is it when you set it to, to that setting, you hit the shutter release, the mirror goes up, and it won't take the photo until you hit the shutter release again. Now it's taken the photo. If you hit the shutter while it's in M up, mirror up, and you forget, after 30 seconds, the camera will take the photo by itself. If you forget that you wanna, that, that you were taking the photo. 
for some reason. All right, so on the front here, this top uh, button here is your depth of field preview button, which you can probably see the aperture blades closing down. And as you look through the viewfinder, it kind of shows you what your your uh, photo was going to look like after, you know, uh, you know, at the given aperture. All right. One thing, it's an automatic film winding camera. I mean, even without the the additional uh, motor drive, the motor drive or the battery pack is just for a better performance. You know, it gets you up to eight frames per second versus five and a half frames. But um, if you, you know, you really listen to what this camera is doing when you take a, a photo. Uh, let's just hear this out here for a second. Okay, in that little, you know, sound you heard, you're also advancing the film. And it sounds like really it's doing nothing more than taking a picture. The mirror's going up, the mirror's coming down, and, and that's really all you're really hearing. But in that, you're actually... The film is actually being advanced, and th that's what's just so really cool about this camera is that it's the 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 sounds and noises are, are so well controlled that um, you don't even really detect that the film was being advanced really quickly after you took the uh, the photo. Okay, the the film rewind uh, system here is uh, your your number one here and your number two here okay so you all you do is just uh, put this little dust cover flip this out of the way put your finger under there press this button in and and then hit the number two button and if there were you know film in there it would be rewinding the film right now and in the settings here you can set the film leader to still be you know to not go in a canister when you're rewinding the film, which is my preference, I'd rather have just a little bit of leader left so I can, you know, it makes it easier to load it into the developing uh, tank, you know, the spool that you use for the uh, developing tank when you do that. This camera by default comes with a data back, and uh, data back is, is simply a, you know, this uh, film back that, that um, prints information, like your exposure information, your shutter speed, your ISO, your, you know, these different types of things. It prints it onto the film itself. You've got a couple of options there. You can print between the frames so it doesn't, you know, show up on your actual photo. Or you can have it print in the little, you know, in the corner of your photo. It, th this camera, besides just printing it on your film, it'll actually print it onto a, a CF card. There, the MV1. Uh, optional data reader is uh, is an item that you can actually plug into to one of these ports uh, you know after you've taken a few rolls of film and you can pull the data from the film it'll you know it's basically like EXIF data um, so this you know you can kind of see how this was a camera that was that had one foot in the digital age and another foot in the film age because given you know that this this camera was released in 2004 the clock and the uh, the calendars. It's kind of neat that um, it's good till the year 2099, where a lot of the, uh, these cameras that had the um, these built-in data backs are completely obsolete now because a lot of them just didn't even go past uh, didn't go past Y2K. Um, they couldn't. A lot of them couldn't figure out Y2K. You know, if if it's 1900 or if it's the year 2000, um, and some of them just weren't made to. To go that far into the future you know okay there's a couple different power sources uh, on this camera you can have the um the the default power source is just going to be two uh one, uh these one two three a uh, batteries here they're they're fairly easy to find you know they're they're not overly expensive i actually bought some today for two for 9.99 you know and they last quite a while i've had these two batteries in here for i don't know the last 10 rolls about I don't know three months or so of uh, of photos, yeah, so it's you know it's a fairly reliable power source. You know I haven't had any problem with it. An optional power source, of course, is uh, the battery pack here, and I'll show you this a little bit. This battery pack will can hold eight uh, AA batteries. That's one option. 
it can actually hold in ENL EN EL4 uh, big battery like you see in your Pro Nikons like a, a D5, D4, D3. It's just that big battery uh, that you know it can. It's a re big rechargeable battery. It can go in here. Okay, so you uh, you know you pop this on here. All right, and uh, screw it in. And co so a couple things happen when you attach this battery pack. Uh, first of all, great fit and finish. You know, it's it's nice and solid. You're not going to hear any like jiggling or or uh, any. You're not going to feel any wobbling or anything like that. And now you've got an eight frame per second uh, full frame, you know, film camera that um, that is you know well suited for pretty much any type of photography. You've got a shutter release here, which is expected, uh, you know, in a modern DSLR, but you have it here in an SLR. Uh, you've got an additional uh, pad here, the four-way pad, and you've got uh, the locking uh, button for the pad. You've also got the uh, the thumb wheel, rear thumb wheel for your vertical shooting, and a front thumb wheel for your vertical shooting. So as you can see, it's it's well suited for vertical shooting at this point. You've got the nice deep hand hand grip here. Um, the shutter release has a lockout feature, and uh, when you unlock it, it uh, it frees up the uh, shutter. All right, guys. So let's take a look at the the back of the Nikon F6. Um, let's focus on this massive uh, LCD display real quick. Now it's backlit. You just uh, pull on the uh, the power switch. You rock the the power switch, and the backlight comes on. It goes off on its own after after a little bit, and it shows you uh, as you can see more information there when you pull it. It's kind of like the precursor to uh, to what we're used to seeing, like in in modern uh, digital Nikon's. Kind of works the same way. There's a lot of information in this little screen, so let's uh, let's just take a quick look at it. All right, the the menu. Uh, button here uh, shows you access to the CSM menu, the setup menu, shooting menu, and the non-CPU lens menu. Non-CPU lens, we'll start with that one. It's the most straightforward. Uh, I have a couple of lenses set in here already. Um, my uh, 85 f2, which I actually don't have anymore, 55 2.8 micro, and a 51.2 um, I've got preset. Those are AIS lenses that you know this this camera works with modern lenses like uh, you know like a brand new Nikon D850 or D500 or what have you so um, you have to set it for the old lenses um, unlike like say maybe an F3 that's all you know that's the only type of lens that it's really set up for okay shooting menu go through some of those got an interval timer believe that or not uh, if you um, want to take 36 or 40 some odd you know if you bulk uh, bulk load your film uh, you can take like 36 or up to I think it's 46 I haven't bulk loaded for quite a while um, but you can get close to 50 shots from a from a roll you know if you want to do interval timer it's pretty it's set up pretty much like a modern uh, uh, DSLR multiple exposure you can kind of determine how many exposures you want to take if you set the camera to multiple exposure data imprint this camera will uh, print information uh, on the film itself, uh, you know, on the film frame or in actually in between the film frames. So that's kind of a, a, a neat feature on this camera. Okay, moving on to the setup menu. That's pretty straightforward. The date, date format and so forth. The CSM menu. This is where you can kind of customize your uh your, your shooting menu, which, you know, what CSM stands for, Customized Shooting Menu. Back to CSM, Shooting Slash Display. Okay, for loading the film, you want it to load when you close the back. That's, you know, pretty straightforward. You just lay the film uh, leader all the way to the little red dot in the back, and then it'll, it'll auto-load. It does it every time without any problem. All right. Um, oops. Let's see here, shooting, display, film rewind. When do you want the film to rewind automatically? You want to hold off and uh, rewind it manually. Um, and a case where you might want to do that is if you are uh, in very cold conditions. You don't want to wind super cold film. 
because you have the possibility of discharging static electricity and messing up your frames that way, or um, maybe even breaking the film if it's uh, if it's brittle. So in extreme conditions, you, you don't want to automatically rewind your film. You want to do it manually. Okay. All right. Oops. And let's see. Film leader. I like this little option here. Leave the leader out is how I always leave it set. And that's pretty self-explanatory. When this thing automatically rewinds your film, it's not going to take it all inside the spool. That's my preference. If you're traveling or something, you may want to, you know, rewind it entirely. Keep it nice and safe inside the spool. Uh, if you're planning on developing soon after, like I usually do, I like to leave it out. That's just one less step when I load the film onto the uh, um, developing reel. Okay. Um, what is the last frame? Is it when you hit the end of the film? Or is it frame 36, frame 35? You make that call. Okay. And some more stuff here. Uh, your flash sync speed. You can set it to 1 to 50th. This camera is capable of FP uh, flash sync. As you notice here, the normal um, the normal flash sync speed is 1 to 50th, but you can also set it to 1 to 50th as FP, okay, which lets you use higher than 1 to 50th shutter speeds to sync your flash, which is good for like fill flash. But what um, what uh, the way FP works, just in a quick nutshell, is it actually uh, fires the flash off several times to kind of follow the shutter curtain as it's opening and closing um, to, you know, to evenly light your flame frame. If you, it, you got to have a compatible FP, uh, sync flash, which I happen to have. And, uh, and then it works fine. If you, uh, tried that in, you know, like a higher, uh, shutter speed without the FP turned on is you're going to get like a half, half frame, you know, half lit frame. Let's see slowest speed that you'll allow for sync. If you're like working in program mode, some kind of automatic mode modeling flash that's where you get several uh you know several shots uh, or several flashes at a time i guess to check your light before you start actually taking photos and the modeling flash is something you see again on the on the modern uh, dslrs and i don't know who actually uses that i've never used it um i guess somebody taking a picture of models uh, maybe like in a studio environment uh, function of the center button, what you want it to do, you want it to, to bring your autofocus uh, spot back to the center, your, your focus sensor back to the middle. The, what happens when you hit the multi-selector, you know, does it wake up the meter, does it initiate autofocus, and, or what have you. No action is what, the way I've always had it set. Uh, what do you want to do with your function button? Um, oops. I like how it, it remembers where you left off too, if you notice that. Um, you want to do like just a quick spot metering with that function button. That's kind of a, a neat way to use it. You know, you, you can take several readings uh, using spot metering instead of having to actually switch over. All right, so you kind of get it. Uh, guys, there's a lot of stuff going on here. The ISO button, which is next here, is pretty straightforward. You, you set your ISO as you can see and it winds back once you hit 6400 it, it comes back to the first setting which is DX and I've got film in there right now so the DX is reading the film at, at 400 but if you want to shoot something other than box speed of course you're able to do that alright I'm okay with the 400 on this Tri-X uh, next button here is your different flash settings if you want to use like a rare curtain sync or what have you certainly able to do that oh, no shadows there's your different settings for your flash okay and I usually leave it on rare okay and your info button this shows you uh, several of the uh, like your last uh, your, your most recent rolls of film there um, and what your what what ISO uh, you shot them at. 
you see right here, that's your, that is your focus points. Okay. And you can, just like on a modern icon, you can set your focus points there, uh, however you prefer. And this, of course, is a single dot. This is, this next setting is like a group area autofocusing. Next one up is more focus points, and this one is your focus tracking. As you see, there's no there's no set focus point. And if you look down here, you see the autofocus continuous. If I change the switch in the front there, it goes to autofocus single or down to manual focus. Okay, so there it is, guys. Hope you enjoyed this review. I really enjoyed this camera. I think you will too. It's the, the ultimate expression of a modern uh, SLR. Um, yeah, so go out and get you a Nikon F6.